If you've ever looked at the price of a high-end HOTAS setup and thought, I could build that myself, you're in good company. I did exactly that. What started as a small curiosity turned into months of design, prototyping, 3D printing, wiring, reprinting, rewiring, and eventually, success. This is my custom, fully featured, plug-and-play HOTAS system. Built from the ground up, it's got 62 button inputs, 12 axes, and haptic feedback, and it works perfectly with every game I've thrown at. This is how I built it, why I built it, and where it's going next. This system is split into two separate USB HID devices, a joystick and a throttle. The joystick has 27 physical buttons, six analog axes, and a clever axis to button function that adds five virtual button inputs, maxing out at 32, which is the limit for most generic gamepads. The throttle adds 30 buttons, five analog axes, and a rotary encoder axis, because why not? And the best part? It's plug and play. I've tested it in DCS, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Ace Combat 7, War Thunder, Project Wingman, Arma 3, and even Tiny Combat Arena, and it works perfectly. Plug, find 62 buttons and 12 axes, and then play. So why go through all this? Because like many of you, I wanted a HOTAS setup. I looked into entry-level sticks like the VKB Gladiator NXT. Great products. But where I live, once you add shipping, import fees, and customs handling, even the affordable options become completely unrealistic. A $130 stick turns into a 300 plus commitment. So I said, fine, I'll build one myself. And I started with just the basic pins from the Arduino Pro Micro and the joystick library. Nothing fancy, just a few buttons and axes. But it worked. It was rough, but it worked. And that was enough for most arcade games, but I wanted more. So I set up to make a no compromise design. I started looking into high-end sticks, Wing Wing, Thrustmaster, VKB, Verbal, and thought, how do they do it? What makes a $400 stick feel premium? So I made a checklist. One, a lot of buttons, way more than the amount of pins that an Arduino has. Two, contactless analog axes. Three, gimbal dampeners. Four, modularity. Five, build quality and ergonomics. I liked VKB's and Verpal's design the most, so I started looking in detail, and that led me to the Su-57. Specifically, the prototype name, T-50, which is also the name of the Mongoose T-50 stick. Coincidence? Maybe not. The Su-57 has been my favorite jet since I first saw it in Ace Combat, Assault Horizon, which is the black sheep of the series, but that bird stuck with me. Later, I found real-life inspiration through YouTube channels like Combat Approved, with their documentary on the Su-57 and Millennium 7's breakdowns on Russian Fighter. And to my surprise, I was able to find a lot of good references. So I fired up Fusion 360 and started designing. I wanted a clean internal design, no spaghetti of wires between the grip and the base. So I went with I2C communication. That let me connect two GPIO expansion chips in the stick, giving me 32 digital inputs for buttons and hats a 16-bit ADC to give me four high-resolution analog channels and a haptic motor driver for more immersion. Then, just four wires run through the gimbal into the base, power, ground, data, and clock. Speaking of the base, there's a second 16-bit ADC that reads the two main axes of the gimbal using Hall effect sensors. The throttle follows the same design principles. It's got dual levers, rotary switches, toggle switches, and an encoder all managed through another pair of GPIO expanders and 16-bit ADC combo. And most importantly, it feels good. The inputs are solid. There's haptic feedback, which can rumble on missile launches, trigger recoil effects, or just give you tactile feedback on button presses. And the chip supports a massive range of effects, preloaded and customized. I also added adjustable dampening to the joystick gimbal that can be X's by removing the leather boot in the base. Also a customizable Deaton system and adjustable friction for the throttle levers. So, that pretty much covered everything from my checklist. So let's talk budget, because that was the main reason to go through all of this process. The whole build, stick and throttle, cost me $139. Around $52 for electronics, $28 for fasteners, $26 for bearings, and $8 for springs, and two spools of filament. All of electronics and hardware I used are readily available in online stores. 
I bought all components from AliExpress, and filament was purchased locally. So I'm pretty sure I bought all the matte black filament prototyping because I haven't seen it in stock for a while now. So, where is this project going next? Swappable grips, for starters. I found some 360 degree four pin connectors that can be used between the grip and the base, and I can have an entire ecosystem of grips that talk over I2C. I want to make a stick for the SU-30SM and one for the F-22 Raptor, which are my favorite DCS mods. I'm working on a helicopter collective too, based on the same design principles. If all that works, I'll make a custom PCB with all the I2C modules built in to go inside of the grips. Also, I've been trying to migrate the project to a more powerful microcontroller for a while. I was doing some research on STM32 Blue Pill, but I had no luck trying to develop my own firmware on Cube IDE. Lately, I've been looking at the Teensy boards, so maybe I'll get one to experiment. So, yeah, that's the project. Built in spare evenings, tested across a lot of games, all running off an Arduino. If you want to check it out, the link's in the description. If you already bought it, thank you. And if you're thinking about starting your own DIY HOTUS journey, maybe this is your sign.